watching WACT News first at four. Every year in this state, more than 350 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer. That's according to the state health department. About one out of every three of those women die from that condition. WECT's Kim Ratcliffe talked to a doctor who says they're seeing more late stage cases when it comes to cervical cancer. Well, January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, and research shows that late stage cervical cancer appears to be on the rise. Joining me now is Dr. Michael Robinson, gynecologic oncologist with Novant Health Zimmer Cancer Institute to help us learn a little bit more. Thank you so much for coming in. Sure, thank you for having me again. I should say, yes, welcome back, <laughs> because I guess we didn't scare you off the first time, so that's Not a good sign. <laughs> I hope I can follow Gabe's energy, though. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> and an important topic, especially if it's cases of cervical <clears throat> cervical cancer uh, late stage are uh, on the rise. Why do you think that is? So yeah, this is an important thing that we're finding with cervical cancers. There was a study that came out about a year ago in the International Journal of Gynecologic Cancer that looked at this um, and found that late stage cancers are on the rise primarily because of lack of access to screening and lack of, lack of vaccination to uh, the HPV virus, which is the biggest cause of cervical cancers in this country and worldwide. And what are some of the risk factors <coughs> that folks should be aware of as well? So uh, long list of risk factors. Um, a lot of it is lack of access to medical care. So women who are not being seen regularly by any physician, either a gynecologist, a primary care provider, somebody who can perform a gynecologic exam. Um, screening tests vary depending on how they're done and there are different standards that are used that are really determined by the provider. So unfortunately, women think that they may not need any more exams once they reach a certain age, which is unfortunately not the case. Um, so that's why you know the biggest thing that women can really we want them to understand is just to see somebody once a year for an exam. And you talked a little bit about screenings. Let's go over who should be getting those screenings. Screenings start uh, in this country 25 up to age 65. And so, like I said, there are uh, different guidelines that are followed that are really determined by their providers. So as long as women are able to show up once a year, then their provider can determine the appropriate screening interval. Yeah, because I think now it's what, every other year, every two years, some of it, it depends, really does change. Right, so it depends on the patient's age. It depends on their prior screening history as well, um, as well as the type of test that's being done. So some tests include testing for the HPV virus. Other tests only include what's called a pap test, which is what most people know about, which right. includes looking just for abnormal cells on the service. And real quickly, I know a lot of parents, you know, with, let's say, sexually active teenagers right now are really looking at that HP vaccine, HPV vaccine. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important? So HPV is responsible for over 90% of cancers of the cervix. And we know that it is a sexually transmitted infection. It is the most common sexually transmitted infection. Anybody who's been sexually active in their lifetime will have likely been exposed to it. The vaccine is eligible starting at age nine and FDA approved in this country up to age 45 for use. And we know that since the implementation of the vaccine about 20 years ago, rates have decreased about 3% per year in early stage cancers, but unfortunately not late stage cancers. All right, well, something definitely for parents to think about for sure. Thanks for sharing all that information with us. We appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you.